Hey everybody, uh, good morning. We came straight to Charlevoix last night and uh, just found a nice uh, quiet spot and parked. We are, we are parked on Park Avenue, which runs right along Lake Michigan between downtown and the hospital, which is way down there. Um, they got this sort of roadside park that runs the entire length of this, this road in addition to uh, an established park over there. Uh, the park itself is sort of closed, is closed at night, as far as I know. Um, but I actually come to Charlevoix um, once a week, Wednesday nights, uh, to take one of our trailers to the hospital up here. Uh, so I happen to know that people park along Park Street all night, all the time, and nobody seems to bother them. Now, you might be wondering, wait, you come here every week? Then why did you come here on vacation? That makes no sense. Yeah, you're right. Uh, except when I'm here, I'm here in a semi, and I sleep at the hotel about three miles north of town, which means I don't really have the opportunity to come into town and explore like I'd like to. So uh, now that I've got a couple days to myself, I'd really like to check out the town because Charlevoix is really nice. Uh, it's... Uh, right on the lake between it's actually between Lake Michigan and another lake uh, so it's sandwiched between these two big bodies of water and uh, it's got a real nice downtown and it's a it's a small town so uh, it's quieter than Traverse City so I'm gonna walk around downtown and check out the the stores and stuff um, and then uh, see if there's a nice beach take out go out to the water maybe uh, maybe even take the kayak out finally I did bring the paddle this time <laughs> So uh, we're just going to hang out here for a few more minutes and then uh, going to whip a U-turn and head down toward downtown. There's a couple of streets where you can park for free. So I'm just going to pull onto one of those and park and uh, go walk around. So, yeah, see you guys in a bit. Okay, I found this nice shaded spot here by this church. Uh, Frank is inside. I got a, a fan that I bought blowing on him to keep him cool but uh, it's only going to get up to the mid 70s today so he should be fine that that spot's nice and shaded so we're going to walk on downtown it's only a couple of blocks and see what we find Okay, that place was awesome. The lady, or the girl behind the counter said they have over 90 different flavors throughout the store, which is unbelievable. Um, uh, by the way, do I look touristy enough with the sun hat and the tacky shirt? <laughs> Trying to blend in. Now I just need some sunscreen on my nose. <laughs> Oh my. Are you sure? I want banana. 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 I want banana
I don't even know where to start. Okay, so I am quickly discovering that Charlevoix is not a place for people who are on a diet. <laughs> However, if you've got a sweet tooth like I do, you're in heaven here. I got some uh, double dark chocolate fudge and some cookies and cream fudge. Now I gotta walk back to the van real quick and put them in the fridge so they don't melt while I'm walking around. And I don't wanna have to carry it. So I'll head back real quick and put them away. All right, so this is the Charlevoix drawbridge. Um, over on this side, under here, this is Lake Charlevoix, which is a really long lake that extends many miles that direction. I don't know how many, but it's quite a bit. It's a big lake. And then over here, of course, that's Lake Michigan at the end of this channel. Uh, this bridge is the only connection between the north and south sides of Charlevoix. When this bridge is up, you are stuck until it closes. There is no getting north or south. It's literally a 60 mile trip around the lake to get back to the other side. All summer, or should I say all winter, they were working on this bridge. And the hospital is over here, my hotel is over there. And for about two weeks, they closed the bridge at night and I'd get to the hospital about 2.30. So what I ended up having to do is actually delaying my run for about three hours so that I got here at 5 o'clock and then the bridge would reopen and then I'd go to the hotel. So 5 a.m. I was getting to the hotel. That sucked. So anyway, but it's done now. The bridge is nice and rebuilt. Everything's pretty. Now let's walk up here to this, uh, looks like a lighthouse of some kind or some kind of big beacon. Let's go take a look. Okay, we got a big damn propeller here. Yeah, it's pretty big. I wonder what kind of ship this is for. Probably a a freighter of some kind would be my guess. That thing's huge. Okay, we got a nice uh, public beach here with uh, swings and slides and stuff. That's kind of nice. It's very nice. Uh, this is the, the park that I actually told you about this morning. I was parked, basically, you can't really tell, but there's a big hill behind the park. I was parked at the top of that hill on the other side of those trees. So uh, this is right in the area where I was last night. Let's go take a look at this big red uh, beacon. The structure is not designed for public access. Proceed at your own risk. What if I don't want to proceed at my own risk? What if I want to proceed at somebody else's risk? Why should I use my risk? Okay, I'm lame. So what? Sue me. Okay, well, I just had a uh, marginally okay lunch uh, at some kind of a bar and grill type place. I had a steak and potatoes and uh, uh, clam chowder, and it was all right. <sighs> but it was overpriced, uh, and the wait staff needs more training. I had to ask for everything, including refills, but what are you going to do? No point in dwelling on it. That's the, what you, that's the risk you take when you try new things. 
I just won't go back there. I'll try something else next time. So I'm going to walk back to the van now. Excuse me. Check on Frank. And then uh, go explore some more. See what uh, nice things I can find. All right, folks. So we, uh, we're just hanging out in here. And as I sat here, I kind of thought of something that I wanted to point out. When you take a trip like this, or really any vacation of any kind, it's very important to remember to take the time to relax. A lot of folks, when they take vacations, they try to squeeze in as much activity as they possibly can to make the most of their trip, and they forget to relax. And by the time they get home, they're exhausted. And then they gotta get up the next morning and go to work. So, I like to just take some time every day and just sit and relax. And for me, I'm really enjoying just sitting in the van, feeling the breeze through the, through the windows, watching people go by. And that's what vacation is all about, really. It's not about doing stuff. It's about relaxing, recharging your batteries. Frank seems to get the idea. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Be sure to take the time to relax. It's very important. So once I'm done relaxing, I'm going to go back downtown and uh, try and get you some good, good shots of the city. I'll see you all in a bit. Everybody, good morning. We're on our way home from Charlevoix. Had another very nice night last night. We just uh, turned the van around and went back to the same spot we were in the night before and uh, slept perfectly well. And now I am heading toward home, but it's going to be a pretty long drive, but I am going to take my time getting there. Uh, there are a couple of state forest campgrounds I want to check out on the way for future reference. By the way, as long as my mind is on it, I want to mention that the water system in the van, you might recall it was a huge project of mine, it is working exactly as planned. It's flawless, basically. The shower drains beautifully, the toilet works perfectly, and it's been, this is the fourth day out, the, to the toilet tank isn't even half full. So that's a long time to go without having to dump your tank, so I'm really pleased with the capacity. Uh, and uh, even the gray water tank isn't full yet, and I showered every day, and it's still not full, so that's good. Uh, 
I gotta tell you folks, I don't care how big, how small, how new, or how old your motorhome is. If it has a toilet and a shower that work, you're good to go. Everything else is optional as far as I'm concerned. Having a way to get cleaned up after a long day outside, when you're all sweaty and sticky and nasty, and you get a nice hot shower and feel all fresh, that is night and day over tent camping as far as I'm concerned. And having a toilet, an actual flush toilet that actually get rid of your waste, also night and day over tent camping. But that's just my opinion. Some people really like the whole rustic being outdoors and roughing it kind of thing. I don't. Camping is a relative term. I can camp in this van, but it's not camping in the true sense. But the fact is, I'm not into camping in the true sense. I like to travel. And I like to travel with my own home creature comforts and not have to pay for a hotel. And that's why I bought an RV. And that's and I bought a little RV like this for the convenience of it. You know, I don't think I've ever mentioned why I chose a Class B over anything else. I want to be able to go anywhere, park anywhere, fit anywhere. You know, I just saw as I was driving a big 45 foot diesel pusher dual rear axle motorhome. This thing was gigantic and clearly very expensive. I'd estimate at least a quarter of a million dollars. And it's very nice, don't get me wrong. Uh, but imagine how inconvenient it might be at times. You can't pull that thing into any parking lot. It won't fit under some over, overpasses or overhangs. And you certainly couldn't park it on the side of the road and spend the night like I did in Charlevoix. You'd have to pay for a campground and you'd have to make sure that that campground has room for you. So I'm not knocking people who have those. I think they're very nice, but for me, I like the convenience. It's more important. So anyway, we're about uh, 10 miles to the first campground. We're just gonna pull in and take a look. This is Graves Crossing State Forest Campground. Um, this is just a small part of it. There's another part goes down that way, um, but looks nice, a lot of trees. And uh, yeah, okay. I don't think there's any water here, but looks nice. Uh, you got picnic tables and burn pits at each site. Uh, looks like there are restrooms right there. Probably just outhouses. I guarantee no running water. That's okay. Uh, yeah. So, okay. This is a nice one. Maybe this will be a future destination. Schrodinger's Campground. Okay, this is Manistee something State Forest Campground. Shoot, I already forgot it. It's kind of right off of a busy road. I mean, these, these sites are just literally less than 50 feet from this really busy highway. So it's probably not going to be real quiet. But basically, you got this main road out here, the main road of the campground, and then you got these small uh, protrusions off the side of the road that have these circles, and each circle has multiple campsites. So, I'm going to remind myself, Manistee River Bridge State Forest Campground. Uh, I can't read the price, but basically, I guess you could go deeper in if the road noise bothers you. Yeah, you got restrooms right there. Yeah, here's one of the offshoots like I told you about. You got these side roads. And then you got these circles, and each circle has spaces. So this is a little deeper in, and there's more that way. So, okay. Doesn't look too crowded either. So, uh, yeah. I guess you can come if you're driving by. It might be maybe a good place to spend the night. Or something like that. If you go deeper in, you probably get even, even quieter. So, all right. 
So this is a nice one, Manistee River Bridge, Manistee River Bridge State Forest Campground. All right, so there's one more I want to check out before heading home. All right, I think this is it right here. Yep. Oh, hush, Frank. As soon as anything changes with the van, he automatically starts whining. All right, Goose Creek State Forest Campground. Let's see what it says here. $10 a night, horses permitted. Uh, let's go to the right, I guess. What's this sign say? Oops. Okay, let's see. River crossing. Yeah, there's a hip, there's the river. Campers, camps with horses not permitted beyond this point. So what does it, are camps without horses permitted beyond this point? Restrooms up there, outhouses I should say. Oh yeah, this is nice, look at this. Nice creek there. You know, this is another reason to have a small RV. A big one wouldn't be able to get in here. Bumpy road. This is a nice campground, folks. Okay, so now I know. Definitely be coming back here someday. All right, I guess this is the end of the road. So I gotta turn around. Okay, folks, that was good. Good, good, uh, definitely worth the while coming out here. Check this out. Um, so we had three different camp state forest campgrounds that we checked out, and uh, there are many, 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 many others all over Michigan. Uh, unfortunately, with Michigan, there are almost no free campsites. I don't know why Michigan doesn't have any free campgrounds, but we don't. This is the close, as close as it comes. Fairly cheap, rustic, no facilities to speak of, uh, but still have to pay. So that's it, folks. I hope you all enjoyed the video as usual. Uh, Ma uh, Charlevoix and all the State Forest campgrounds, very nice. Northern Michigan is very nice. So I will see you all. Oh boy. <laughs> see you all next time. Take care.